Okay, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Okay, everybody who did not announce yourself, do uh, please open your, unmute your phone and announce yourself. We got uh, CK, we got Zizla from Texas, we got uh, Jean Bratton, we got um, from Wilmington, Delaware, we got uh, Anthony and, and uh, Loretta Jackson from Wilmington, Delaware. Let's hear from everybody. Just oh, unmute your phone and just announce your name and let us know where you're from. Hey, Dr. Burr, this is Ryan. Hey, Ryan, on the road again, huh, brother? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right, now you drive carefully. God bless you. Oh, God bless you. Hey, always got to take time out for the Lord, right? <laughs> praise God. Praise God. All right, now, talk to you later. Hey, Pastor. Hey, Christina. God bless you. How you doing? God bless. Doing great. Got Tommy sitting next to me. All right. How's Paige doing? Um, she's doing okay. They did her blood work yesterday, and some of her um, stats have come up. So now they're just going to wait another month and see what happens. Well, praise God. We'll be praying much for her, okay? And for you and Tommy and the whole family. Awesome. Thank you so much, and we keep you in our prayers as well. Good, good. Thank you. God bless you. God bless. Anyone else we haven't heard from? Hi, this is Pastor Carter. This is Brian from Wilmington, Ohio. Hey, Brian Whitaker, Wilmington, Ohio. How you doing, Brian? Well, doing pretty good. Just uh, praising the Lord and um, doing a lot of different work, <laughs> different Bible studies and stuff I'm in. So. Staying busy, huh? Staying busy. Yeah. And staying in the Word. Hey, greet your pastor when you see him, okay? Tell him I said hello. Okay. Good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, talk with you later. All right. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jane Bratton, can, um, is your sound, your, can, can I hear from you? Yes, but I'm having a little problem with my computer, so I'm on the phone. Okay, 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 okay. Then you will not I'm, be in the I'm chat window tonight, in. right? Pardon? Will you be in the chat window tonight? I'm trying to find out what's going on here. Okay, 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 okay. Well, we we'll ask I, um, Jackie to assist you, uh, you, to, you and Jackie to um, handle the chat window this, this evening. Jackie, if you'll take that and... Gene, when you come on, you two can handle that together. Praise God. Praise God. Hey, Jackie Carter, come on and say hello to me. Haven't seen you in about five minutes. Yeah, okay, she says she's getting there. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, praise God for another opportunity to study the Word of God. Brian Whitaker is all excited about it, and Ryan's on the road, and uh, this was down in Texas, and CK, and we're going to ask C.K. if she can come and lead us in prayer. C.K., could you do that for us? Dear Lord, thank you for letting us get together again tonight. ConferenceCall.com. The recording has started. Open, it, open our ears and our hearts to receive what you would have us to learn from your word tonight and be with Dr. Carter as he leads us. In our right name we pray. God to Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We thank you for the prayer, CK, and um, thank for those who were checking in while the prayer was going on. CK down in Texas led us in prayer tonight, and um, we just thank God. Thank God for every one of you for taking your time out to be with us tonight. Um, Justina says keep her daughter Destiny in, in prayers. Destiny had... Um, a to has a torn ligament, goes in oh. Friday for an MRI. We believe that all things are going to work out well. and She's healed. Praise God. All right. Uh, Jackie should have the chat window pretty soon. And uh, we're going to move on. Hey, Andrew says, great prayer. God bless everybody. Andrew and Cheryl are on. So praise God. Let's take a look at... 
Genesis 22 through Genesis 36. We're going to cover about 14 chapters tonight. There's Jackie. We're going to cover about 14 chapters tonight. Genesis 22 through 36. And so um, we um, look forward to this. We're going to cover a lot of things. We're going to look at um, Genesis 22, the offering of Isaac. We're going to look at Genesis 23, the death of Sarah. We're going to look at Genesis 24, a wife for Isaac. That's exciting, too. We're going to look at Genesis 25, Abraham's death and the birth of Jacob. Uh, we ask that you mute your phones, everybody, and um, so that there be another service. Thank you very much for muting your phones. Okay. Uh, we're going to look at Genesis 26. Isaac told a lie, too. We're going to look at the renewal of the covenant in Genesis 26. We're going to take a look at Genesis 27, Rebecca's plot to get the blessing for her favorite son, Jacob. We're going to look at Genesis 28. Jacob flees to Laban in Syria. Genesis 29, Jacob's love for Rachel. Genesis 30, the birth of Joseph. And also in Genesis 30, Jacob prospers in Syria. We're going to look at Genesis 31, Jacob leaves Syria. Genesis 32, Jacob wrestled with God and received a new name. We're going to see how the name Israel came about. Genesis 33, Jacob and Esau are reconciled. After 20 years, the brothers were reconciled. Genesis 34, how Dinah was defiled. Dinah was the sister. Um, um, she had 12 brothers and one sister. Genesis 35, the death of Rachel and the death of Isaac. And then we finish up with Esau's descendants. There's a whole chapter on the descendants of Esau. So we have a good lineup of uh, subjects to cover uh, in our study tonight. Now, we're not going to cover word for word in the Bible, but we're going through the Bible. just want to review uh, a part of last week's lesson, <coughs> and um, where God visited Abraham and cut the covenant with him. God cut the covenant with him. This was very, very exciting, and the Lord ministered to me even as I was sleeping last night about cutting the covenant and um, the vision that Abraham had, okay? And it, and back in, actually starts in, in 12 and 13. Uh, I won't spend a whole lot of time with it, but I'll just summarize it. God appeared to Abraham and, and, and told him in chapter 15 what to do. Um, to take a heifer of three years old and a she-goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. These were the, the uh, animals that Abraham was to offer unto God. Abraham built an altar and, and cut the meat uh, and, and laid the, the birds out and laid the meat side by side. And then he waited on the Lord. The birds came and tried to eat the meat, but Abraham chased the birds away. And then at a certain time, ladies and gentlemen, this is such a very important passage of Scripture. I want you, you to reread Genesis 15. At a certain time, darkness covered the earth, ladies and gentlemen. A, a, a period of darkness covered the earth. And then Abraham saw the fire of God. The hand of God in a fire just danced down the altar, walked, the fire of God walked through that sacrifice that Abraham had laid out and then burnt up the sacrifice. What a significant uh, passage of scripture. It was actually a, a type and shadow of the crucifixion of Jesus and, and, and the, the covenant that God cut with mankind through the death of Jesus Christ. So God cut that covenant first with Israel, 
with, I'm sorry, with Abraham to let Abraham know that he was going to be the father of a great nation and that God would bless that nation and God would bless his seed and uh, God is not a man that he should lie. And so that awesome experience where the, the sun went down and darkness covered the earth and then the fire of God consumed that offering. And then when you look at uh, on the cross, uh, the gospel accounts of Jesus on the cross, you'll find that Jesus became the sacrifice, the Lamb of God who was nailed to a cross. And God cuts the, the covenant with all mankind through sacrificing his only son, Jesus Christ, the only sacrifice God would accept for the forgiveness of our sins. And then when we look at Jesus on the cross, for the hours of 3 p.m. to uh, 6 p.m., uh, I'm sorry, uh, the sixth hour to the ninth hour, from 12 to 3 p.m., darkness covered the whole earth. God accepted the sacrifice. Jesus said, it is finished unto, unto thee, Father, I commit my spirit. And Jesus gave up the ghost. There's a direct parallel between... Let me see, William. A direct parallel between what God did uh, with Abraham and, and what God did when he sacrificed his own son, Jesus, on the cross. And then when you add to that, uh, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Praise God. So that's cutting the covenant. The covenant is a very important, very important uh, relationship between God and mankind. So we see it first with God and Abraham in Genesis chapter chapter 15. And that covenant covers all of the Hebrew nation, all who will be born. And then God added to his covenant the new covenant, the new covenant with the death of Jesus and included all the whole world in, into, his, into his bosom, that all who will receive Jesus Christ will be saved. What a mighty God we serve. I might just preach on that on Sunday. Uh, God's given me some powerful messages to preach on the online church, but I just wanted to review that. Now let's go on to chapter 22 of Genesis. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. We want you all to mute your phones. Please mute I thought your they phones. Were in the okay. Um, okay, God tells Abraham, okay, you've got, this is the son of the promise. This is the one you've been waiting for, and now he's, he's a young man. I want you to go and sacrifice him. Ladies and gentlemen, this was an act of faith on Abraham. I mean, today, if, if someone would uh, do something like this, they would lock you up. They would lock you up. Where are you going, man, with that bundle of, of wood and, 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 and your son and that knife in your hand? Oh, I'm going to sacrifice my son. Ladies and gentlemen, Abraham believed God. And uh, I want you to read that chapter 22. Uh, this is part of our reading assignment. And uh, at one point, uh, Isaac asked his father, uh, uh, hey, Dad, uh, we've got the wood, and we, we've got, I'm, I'm carrying the fire and this censer. Uh, where's, the, the, where's the sacrifice? And, and in verse 8, Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they both went, went both of them together. And Isaac, in faith, followed his father. As they followed his father, as they went along uh, for this for this sacrifice. Okay, and then um, we got to the point where Abraham laid Isaac on the altar, tied him down. The wood was on the altar, and yeah. Abraham was going to take the knife and plunge it into Isaac, kill him, and then burn his body unto the Lord. 
That was what God had commanded him to do. Okay? That's what God had commanded him to do. And so God halted. He halted this. He halted this situation. And the angel of the Lord prevented prevented Abraham from killing his son. Uh, Genesis chapter 23, it is a very, very powerful, very powerful uh, situation. And Abraham, um, verse 14, and Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. God had a ram in the bush. There was a ram, a lamb in the bush, in the thicket. And that's what they offered. But look at the scenario, ladies and gentlemen. God promised Abraham when Abraham was 75 years old, you're going to be the father of a great nation. Abraham had no children. Abraham was old. He was 75 years old. He was a year younger than me. And, and, and God promised him, you're going, to have, you're going to father a child. You're going to father a great nation. And Abraham believed God. The Bible said God counted it righteousness to Abraham because Abraham believed. But yet Abraham's wife, Sarah, um, tried to help God out. Here, take my handmaiden, and because uh, uh, I'm all dried up. Take my handmaiden and have a, have a baby through her. Follow the baby through her. And that, had, that situation has caused so much uh, uh, trouble in the world, so wars and, 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 and hatred, and even to the day, the wars, the hatred, the, the hatred against Israel, the hatred against Christians, uh, because Sarah tried to help her husband out. And then God fulfilled the promise. Abraham was 100 years old, ladies and gentlemen, when he fathered Isaac. He was 100 years old. Well, you may say, well, 100 years old in biblical times, that was like three months. And I thought, no, 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 I'll contrary. He was 100 years old. He was as old as dirt, 100 years old. And Sarah was 90 years old when she gave birth. But it happened. God performed that miracle. And so in Genesis 23, we see uh, the death of Sarah. Verse 1, and Sarah was 100 and Seven and twenty years old. She's 127. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And she died at Kerjath Arba. Kerjath Arba, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. Sarah died in the land of the giants. This is where later on Caleb, Caleb will take on the giants and destroy all the sons of Anak, the giants. Sarah died in that land. Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And so um, Abraham buried her in that land. Verse 4, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you, he says to the sons of Heth, that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And they wanted to give Abraham some property, but Abraham purchased it. And um, later on when Abraham died, uh Ishmael and Isaac buried Abraham in that same cave that he had purchased for the burial of Sarah. This Bible is so awesome. I mean, this is an awesome experience to journey through the Bible. Next in chapter 24, we see that uh, Abraham uh, charges his servant to go and get a wife for Isaac. In those days, your wife was picked out for you, okay? And oftentimes, the wife was picked out for you, okay? And um, in certain situations, you, a man went and found his wife. Uh, in Samson's case, Samson went and saw someone he loved and asked his parents to arrange that marriage. And so Abraham sets up arrangements for the marriage of his son Isaac. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, chapter 24. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his, his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Pray, 
put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. And when a man put his hand under another man's thigh, that was like a handshake. That was like a covenant agreement. It was a binding agreement. And so Abraham uh, said to his servant, put your hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites whom, with whom I dwell. Very important, ladies and gentlemen. Many of the daughters of the Canaanites were the daughters of giants, uh, uh, corrupt people. And so God, uh, Abraham wanted to make sure that his son Isaac married a godly woman. And so the servant was very faithful, verse 10, and the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed. For all the goods of his master was in his hand, and he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a long trip, about 600 miles. He traveled about 600 miles to go and find a wife for Isaac. He loaded 10 camels with goods and wealth and went on his journey. Verse 11, and he made his camels to kneel down without the city, outside the city, by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. This, this uh, servant was very shrewd. He was led by the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen. We see in this uh, Bible early on how people were led by the Holy Spirit, and, and God wants to lead us by his Spirit. And so very shrewdly, this man, this servant, knew that the women in the city had to come out to the wells to draw water in the evening. So where, where's the best place to find a, 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 a young woman? Uh, at the well where they came to feed the herds and draw water. And so here's what the, the servant said in verse 12 of chapter 24 of Genesis. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, Send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. And so he prayed. He said, Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the women of men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down my pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink, and she shall say, shall say Drink. And I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that shall, thou hast appointed for thy servant. So the, the servant asked God to uh, let the, the lady who came out to draw water give him water. And, and, and the one whom God will choose will say, let me feed your camels also. Give me a drink of water, he would ask her. And and she would say, let me feed your camels also. And that would be the sign that this was the, the lady that God had chosen for Isaac. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Verse 15, it came to pass before he had done speaking, he had, very, he had hardly finished his prayer. That behold, Rebekah came out and she was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother. Rebekah was Abraham's niece. Rebecca was Abraham's niece. So Isaac is going to wind up marrying his cousin. Okay? And so you read the rest of that story. And then uh, she did exactly what the servant had asked God uh, for her to do. She would ask, he would ask, give me a drink of water. She would say, not only will I give you a drink of water, but let me feed your camels also. And the servant knew this was the one. Hey, isn't that the way to find a wife? Uh, uh, Ryan's tr driving down the highway. He can't respond right now. His his hands are on the wheel. But what, isn't that a powerful way to find a wife? Ryan, you're driving. Uh, a young man's driving down the highway. He's going to a rest stop, and and he asks God, "Let the the one who brings me uh, some French fries and a milkshake let that be my wife." No, it didn't happen that way with you, Ryan. But it happened that way for Isaac. Isaac is at home. The servant went out seeking a woman 600 miles away to bring Isaac his bride. Now that's faith. Now it takes faith on the, son of, on the part of the son, too, Isaac. 
Abraham's son, Isaac. Ladies and gentlemen, Isaac has to accept whatever the servant brings back. <laughs> now, I ain't going to get into all that, but Isaac has to accept whoever. Hey, hey, uh, the servant's, my dad's servant's going out to get me a wife. I'm going to get married. Well, who are you going to get married? I don't know. You, haven't you ever seen her before? No, I don't. I have never seen her before. Oh, man. Oh, man. I need to pray for you, bro. I, hey, bro, I need to lay hands on you, bro. But that's the way they did it in those days, ladies and gentlemen. And so uh, then uh, the servant had to negotiate with Rebecca's father and Rebecca's brother, who was Laban, um, and they made the negotiations and they came to an agreement. And so the uh, Laban and his, and his father, uh, Laban spoke for the household for, with, along with his father, said, our custom is, our culture is that uh, she should stay here, remain here for several days, and then she can go with you. Um, but um, he asked Rebecca, his daughter, and Rebecca said she was ready to go. And so the servant uh, they left uh, shortly thereafter, um, and the servant brought Isaac's bride to to Isaac. Okay, uh, a very very powerful, very powerful uh, passage of scripture. And then when you look at verse sixty one of chapter twenty four, and Rebecca arose and her damsels, meaning her maids. And they rode upon the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac, said, came, Isaac came from the way of the well, La Haroi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. Isaac was out in the field praying at evening time, praying waiting on this blessing and praying. Ladies and gentlemen, what a way to wait on your blessings, praying with great expectation. You, you've not, not seen what God has for you, but you know it's going to be good because we serve a good God. Isaac teaches us how important it is to wait on the Lord and have faith. He had faith. He had faith that his father was not going to co uh, command the servant to bring him back, you know, a, 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 a floozy. You know, uh, 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 somebody who's not going to be uh, good for him. And so the Bible says Isaac was praying, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. Verse 64 of chapter 24, and Rebecca, Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. She jumped off the camel. I mean, I mean, you just don't jump off a camel. Okay, you can hurt yourself. The camel has a hump, you know. You just don't jump. But she lighted. She jumped off the camel. Verse 65, for she had said unto the servant, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? She said, who's that? Who's that man walking in the field to meet us? And the servant has said, it is my master, Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. She covered her face with the veil. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Verse 67, and Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. They were married in his mother's tent. What a power, what a love story, what a love story, what a powerful story. Isaac got his bride. Moving on to uh, Genesis. By the way, we'll take all questions at 8 o'clock. I know you're loaded with questions, and uh, Jackie's in the chat window, and Dr. Jean Bratton are in the chat window, and I know you all having fun in the chat window. Okay, uh, chapter 25, we're going to look at, the death of Abraham, and the birth of Jacob. Then again, Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. Verse chapter 25. So Abraham was not, <laughs> he was not all dried up. I mean, uh, uh, God activated Abraham. God, after the death of Sarah, 
God activated Abraham, and uh, Abraham became fertile again. He remarried. He remarried and took a wife, and her name was Keturah. And look at this, verse 2 of chapter 25. And she bared him. She gave birth to Zimran and Jokshan and Midan and Midian and Ishmach and Shua. Keturah gave Abraham six children. And then um, you see more about the gene genealogy. Okay. And Abraham, verse 5, gave all that he had unto Isaac. But the, unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac, his son. Concubines, meaning these, um, Abraham had, he married Keturah, and Keturah had maids. Okay, now you can't be doing that today, brothers. You can't, you can't take your wife's maid and call her your wife and all this and sort of, this sort of thing, and you're not supposed to sleep with her. You be faithful to your wife. Okay, and verse 7, And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived, and hundred three score and, and fifteen years. 175 years old Abraham was when he died. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. When you see the words gathered to his people in the scripture, that means the person who died and and um, went to join their fathers and their ancestors. Okay, and then you'll see that Isaac and Ishmael, Ishmael reappears on the scene. Ishmael, the first son of Abraham, uh, he and Isaac bury their father in the cave that Abraham had purchased for uh, Sarah, his wife, according to verse 10 of chapter 25. Okay, as we continue along in chapter 25, you see the birth of Jacob, the birth of Jacob. Okay, and um, let me go back to 25, the birth of Jacob. Rebecca was uh, pregnant and uh, Isaac was 40 years old, verse 20 of chapter 25. 40 years old when he took Rebecca to wife. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. Uh, verse 21. <clears throat> Rebecca was barren and Isaac prayed for her that God would open her womb. And she conceived. <clears throat> verse 22. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. She said, what's going on inside of me? I mean, there's a war. There's a struggle going on inside of me. And the Lord said unto her, verse 23, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger she was pregnant with twins, and these twins were fighting in the womb. They were fighting for supremacy. Two nations. Uh, one would rule the other nation. And uh, that must have been some pregnancy. That must have been a uh, 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 rough pregnancy. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Verse 24. 24. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to the twins. And Esau came out first, but Jacob had a hold on his heel. Okay? And so the birthright, the birthright, in other words, to, to, to receive the blessing, the two-thirds of the blessings in, of the inheritance, along with the leadership of the family, along with other blessings, the birthright went to the firstborn. Esau was the firstborn, 
but Isaac was holding on to his heel. I mean, Isaac fought his brother for nine months. They fought in the womb. And at the time of the birth, Isaac had his brother's heel trying to prevent him from getting out of the womb first. So, you know, you know, God has plans. God has plans for Israel and God has plans for us. We're all, we're all a part of this struggle, ladies and gentlemen, that Rebecca had going on in her womb. One nation would rule over another nation. And we're part of this struggle. Uh, when you look at it spiritually, uh, the kingdom of God will be contested by the kingdom of Satan. We're all a part of that struggle that went on within um, Rebecca's womb. Okay, and then as they grew older, as they grew older, then um, Jacob was able to wrestle the birthright from his brother Esau. He wrestled the birthright from his brother Esau, and um, you read about that in verses 27 through 34. The boys grew older. Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. So Esau was a hunter. Jacob was the houseboy. Okay? <laughs> Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his venison, the deer that he killed, the meat that he killed. But Rebekah loved Jacob. And then so Jacob made a pot of soup. Verse 29, the Bible says, and Jacob sawed pottage. And Esau came from the field and he was faint. Esau came from the field saying he was dying. He was hungry, starving. And Jacob had just made a pot of soup. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore his name was called Edom, meaning red. And Jacob said, yeah, I'll give you some of this soup, but sell me your birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? Esau neglected the birthright, ladies and gentlemen, along with the birthright would be his, his, his leadership among God's chosen people. Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of soup. What good is a bowl of soup going to do me? Oh, if I'm dying, what I mean, what good is a birthright going to do me if I'm dying? Give me some food, man. Take the birthright. And Jacob said, swear to me this day. I mean, they, Jacob played his cards. Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. He even gave him some bread along with it. Gave him, gave him some beverage. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. And Esau's going to hate himself and hate Jacob for many, many years because of this act, this act of foolishness. And, and many of us have done things, foolish things. Uh, but praise God that God has given us space to repent. And, and praise God. And, 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 and people can get born again tonight. You may have done foolishly all your life, but if you confess Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord tonight, you can be saved. And many of us who have done foolish things and, and are still paying the price for the foolish things we've done, we can repent of those things, ask God for, to forgive us and deliver us from that, those things and the consequences. Praise God. We serve a mighty God, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, wrestle for your birthright. Don't give up your birthright. When you receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you receive the King of kings, the Lord of lords. God gives you his very best. When you enter into the kingdom, you become a child of God. And no good thing will God withhold to them that walk uprightly. Okay, we still have a lot of chapters to go. So chapter 26. Isaac told a lie too, just like his his just like uh, his daddy did. Abraham lied when he went to Egypt. Abraham lied when he went to Abimelech. Abraham told those kings that uh, <clears throat> the woman he was with was his sister, not his wife. 
and Abraham tried to protect himself from being killed, and Isaac does the same thing in uh, Genesis 26, like father, like son. We're talking about generational curses, ladies and gentlemen, lying, uh, adultery, alcoholism, a lot. These things, many of these things are generational curses, but the blood of Jesus can deliver us from generational curses. In Genesis 26, even after Isaac lied and God delivered him, then the Lord appeared to Isaac. See, Isaac didn't know the Lord. Isaac, Isaac, Isaac prayed to God, but he had no personal <clears throat> relationship with God like his father Abraham did. But then in verse 24 of chapter 26, the Lord appeared to Isaac by night. This is awesome. This is powerful. And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am, I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, you may know people who have a close walk with the Lord and you may say, well, I want the Lord to speak to me the same way. I want to have that kind of relationship. Well, you can. You just call upon the Lord. You just trust the Lord. God will make an appearance. God will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And so God makes, makes the covenant. God uh, cuts the covenant. The same covenant he cut, he cut with, with Abraham. God announces that covenant and applies it to Isaac and his seed. Chapter 27 Rebecca's plot to get the blessing from Jacob. Now, Jacob had already uh, purchased the birthright from his brother with a bowl of soup. But it will require the hands of, of, I, of Isaac being laid on Jacob in order for Jacob to get the blessing. The transaction was made. Esau gave up the, the blessing. But uh, Esau could still receive the birthright if his father blesses him with it. And so here we find uh, in chapter uh, 27, Isaac is old, he's blind, and, and Rebekah Rebecca is, is uh, scheming to make sure that Isaac does not die without blessing her favorite son, Jacob. And so uh, when, they, when they realized it was about time for, for Isaac to die, and then uh, Isaac says to, Jake, to Esau, go out and kill me some venison. Kill me a deer and prepare me my favorite meal. And Re Rebecca heard that request, and she uh, went to Jacob and said to her favorite son, now your father's about to die, and he wants to pronounce the blessing on, on Isaac. And so on Esau, and so I want you to go and, and, and command the servants to get, get, get a lamb out of the, uh, the field and, and, and let's dress it, let's prepare it. And, and I want to prepare you to give this meal to your father. And so Jacob says to his mother, but, you know, uh, uh, our father, he, 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 he may be blind, but he's not stupid. I mean, he knows I'm, I'm not hairy. Esau's hairy. I'm not hairy. His mother said, don't worry about that. And she, they prepared the meal. His mother took the skin and the fur of the lamb and put it on the nape of his neck and behind his neck and on his chest and on his arms and, and um, made Jacob to feel hairy like his brother Esau. And so Esau, uh, so Jacob presented the, the, the meal to his father, and his father blessed Jacob with the birthright. In um, chapter 27, later on in chapter 7, Esau comes home from the field and says to his father, Here, father, I prepared the meal you requested. And Isaac re um, related to uh, Esau that Jacob had already been there and and received the blessing. And I, uh, Esau was torn up. He was he was he was torn up. He was he was in a rage. And um, 
he threatened to kill his brother. And so Rebecca, listening as she always did, advised Jacob to escape, get 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 leave this leave this house, leave tonight, pack pack uh, what you can and leave tonight and go uh, to Mesopotamia, go to Syria, go to Laban and stay there, and I'll send you a message when things calm down. When, when the coast is clear and it's all right to come back home, I'll send you a message. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Jacob took off, and, and, and we don't see Jacob <clears throat> coming home until it's 20 years later. And during that 20 years, there's that hatred between these brothers. One, he wants to kill his brother because his brother stole the birthright. Uh, on the other flip side, uh, this brother's scared of his brother because he wants he knows his brother wants to kill him. So chapter 28, we find Jacob fleeing to Laban in Syria. Okay, and Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Even though Jacob had deceived his father, the father blessed him again and said, Okay, don't marry any of the, of the daughters of Canaan. These are, these are ungodly people. These, these are the people later on um, that God had commanded Joshua to destroy. These were the people who, uh, whom Satan had developed a race of people after the flood of Noah to conquer, to live in that Canaan land. These were the people, ladies and gentlemen, whom Satan used to populate the promised land because Satan knew from Genesis 3.15 that God was going to raise up a seed that was going to crush Satan's head. And so chapter 28, we find Jacob on the run. And this is a very, very powerful chapter. I want you to read it. And uh, his father blessed him before he left. And this will be the last time. Um, well, uh, he, will, he, will not, he will see his father again, yes. But 20 years, 20 years being separated from his family. So it's a very powerful uh, message. Jacob fled, and um, then Esau, Esau, in spite, in spite of his father's wishes, and, he, and he's angry with his father, he's angry with his mother, he's angry with his, his brother, he's angry with, it, angry with himself. And so Esau goes out and marries two women from among the Canaanites. He doesn't just take one. He gets two wives. He marries two wives from the Canaanites. And so uh, we see Jacob on for, in, chap, in verse 10. We're in chapter 28. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took up the stones of that place and put them for his pillow, pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Jacob's on the run, ladies and gentlemen. He's on the run. His brother's threatened to kill him, and his brother's serious. And Jacob slept, and his stones were his pillow. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of, the, of God ascending and descending. Remember when we were kids, we sang, uh, 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 we are climbing Jacob's ladder, we are climbing Jacob's ladder. Well, this is what uh, Jacob saw on the ladder. He saw a, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angel of God, ascend, angels of God, ascending and descending. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. God cut the covenant with Jacob. Jacob, who, who had been a liar, a deceiver, a usurper, uh, um, uh, uh, an, an ungodly man, but God had a plan. And, and, and so were some of us, ungodly, not deserving this salvation, corrupt. Uh, I know I'm talking about me. Uh, you might want to look at yourself and say, hmm, he might be talking about me, but I know uh, God chose a corrupt vessel and, 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 and gave me the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. 
And he's done that with so many others. And so when you look at the scripture, you look at, you're looking at ordinary people, like people we know. And God has chosen them. And because of his grace and mercy, God changes their lives and, 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 and grafts them into his plan and, and, and adds and, and, and invokes the covenant on them. Okay, and so God promised Jacob <coughs> that he would he would he would bless him and and keep him. And um, Jacob rose up early in the morning, verse eighteen, and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of the place Bethel, but the name of the city was called Luz. Verse twenty. And Jacob vowed a vow. He's promised, Jacob promised, if God would be with me and would keep me in this place that I go and would give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Jacob made a promise, God, if you'll take me safely to uh, my uncle's land and bring me back safely to my father's house and, and feed me and take care of me, uh, then uh, I will surely give you one-tenth of everything I have. I will tithe unto you. And so we see the tithe uh, through Abraham, the tithe through Isaac, and now the tithe being perpetuated through Jacob. What a promise. What a promise. Many of us have made promises. We know people who have made promises unto God but did not keep the promise. But as we go along, you'll see that Jacob kept his promise to God. Okay, to fast forward, chapter 29, Jacob flees to Laban in Syria. Chapter 28, Jacob flees to Laban in Syria. 29, Jacob's love for Rachel. Uh, Jacob... Uh, found, you know, the well was the place, the well was the place, man, I'll meet you at the well. The well was the place to find you a good woman. I, uh, I, know, a lot of, I know a lot of men who have gone to church to find a good woman. I mean, they, 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 know, they know there's a difference between a church woman and a worldly woman. And so uh, Jacob goes to a well. He knows the women have to come out to get water to feed the flock. And so Jacob went to a well and he uh, had to uh, beat up on some thugs who were trying to abuse the women and, 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 and push the women aside to feed their flock. So Jacob had to use a strong arm. And uh, then he finds uh, a Rachel and falls in love with Rachel. And, uh, I mean, he was smitten. He was smitten uh, by Rachel. And... Um, she takes him home and, and, and introduces her, him to her father and says, this is the man that protected us from the thugs at the well. And so it happened to be, the man happened to be his uncle Laban. Okay. And Jacob was home with his relatives and he cried and he was so glad to be with his relatives. And then Laban um, entered into a contract with Jacob and Jacob began working for Laban. And um, Laban promised Jacob to give him Rachel, his wife. And the La Laban was on the slick side. Laban was Laban was shrewd. He was slick. Okay. And um, Jacob did not understand the culture <clears throat> of that nation. He made an agreement with Laban: "I'll work for you for seven years if you'll give me Rachel to be my wife." And so uh, Jacob entered into contract. They got married, and, and Jacob had to work off seven years to work off that contract. But, but here's the thing. When you read chapter 29, you'll see that um, Jacob was in for a surprise, okay? When it, went, and when it went time, when it came time to consummate the marriage, he lifted up the veil, and it was not uh, Rachel uh, under that fine gown. It was um, Leah. And so Jacob was married to Leah. He went 
to labor and say, hey, man, you cheated me, man. I, I worked for you and contracted to work for Rachel. And Laban said, in our culture, the older sister must be married first. And so Laban was slick. But Jacob, because he loved Rachel, he said, I'll work seven more years for you. I'll work seven more years for her. And so Jacob worked a total of 14 years, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, wound up with two wives and uh, 12 sons and a daughter. Okay, uh, verse 30, uh, chapter 30, we see the, oh, in the meantime, Rachel was disliked by Leah, and Leah disliked Rachel. Leah knew that Jacob preferred Rachel, and Leah did all she could to try to get her husband's attention. So there was conflict, and the conflict was even among their children, the sons. These were the sons, the, the so-called sons of Israel, the sons of Jacob. They did not get along. And so Leah would give her handmaiden to Jacob, and Jacob would sleep with the handmaiden, and, and, and he produced sons. And then Leah, uh, Rachel, gave her handmaiden to uh, Jacob, and Jacob produced sons through her. And then finally, 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 uh, Rachel got pregnant, and Joseph was born. That's chapter 30. In chapter 31, we see Jacob leaving Syria. Uh, Jacob had become a wealthy man, and he got wealthy by a uh, man's wealth was measured by the cattle and sheep and goats that he had. And Jacob took the the, the frail looking, uh, sickly looking sheep, and and was able to 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 work with them and to to uh, make 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 sure that they became healthy. And by the time. Um, 20 years were over. Jacob had been in, in that land for 20 years. Jacob was a very, very rich man. And so he decides to leave and go back. No, he didn't decide. The Lord spoke to him. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord said for him to go back, go back to his homeland. And so um, chapter 30, uh, we see the birth of Joseph, we see Jacob prospering in Syria, and then chapter 31, Jacob leaves Syria, and he has to have a confrontation with his father-in-law, Laban. Laban was angry because Jacob left without getting his permission. But Jacob said when, when, when Laban caught up with Jacob, and Laban had an army, and Jacob had an army of servants, and in order to, to avoid a clash, Jacob said, hey, uh, I served you well, and you, you, you know I didn't cheat you in anything. I've made you rich. And so they came into an agreement, and they instituted what we call the mispa, the mispa. And the mispa is what we learned in Sunday school years ago. The Lord watch between you and me while we're absent one from another. Amen. And when we would say that in Sunday school, that was our benediction. Though Everybody would stand and say, the Lord watch between me and thee. While we're absent one from another, amen. But the real deal, the real story was they established that covenant, that mispah, because they didn't trust one another. And so Laban and Jacob built a, built a pile of stones and said, this is the mispah, and, and this, this is a sign that you will not come back and, and attack me, and I will not attack you, and I will not cross this line to attack you. You will not cross this line to attack you. And so they agreed. <laughs> chapter 32, read this chapter. It is powerful. It is awesome. It is awesome. And uh, chapter 31 and 32, Jacob has to get ready to face his brother. Hey, hey, he's going back. God said, go back home. But you, you, there's a brother there. He's hating on you, and he doesn't love you. You messed over him years ago, and he has not forgotten. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, lest there be in us and a root of bitterness, whereby many be defiled. We're not to hold grudges. We're not to hold unforgiveness. But we see in this situation between Jacob and Esau, 20 years of grudges, 20 years. 
Esau can't forget how his brother deceived him and how he always got the upper hand. And so Jacob, realizing that our trouble is on the way, and we'll finish up in a few minutes, Jacob divided his camp. He divided. He sent one wife with her handmaidens and their children and, and a whole lot of cattle and sheep and oxen across the river. And then in, at, a, at another interval, he sent the other wife. And Jacob wrestled. He stayed alone at, a, at the encampment. And there he wrestled. He wrestled with God. Jacob wrestled with God, ladies and gentlemen. He wrestled with God, chapter 32. Please read that chapter. And he wrestled all night long. And, and uh, God spoke to him and said, turn me loose. Nobody can I'll see, see my face. It's almost dawn. You better turn me loose. And, and Jacob said, no, I don't care. I don't care what, what time of the day it is. I'm not going to turn you loose unless you bless me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you get your blessings. That's how you get your blessings. You let God know, God, I'm not going to quit you. No matter what comes against me, troubles, uh, hell or high water, I'm not going to turn you loose unless you bless me. And God blessed him and wounded Jacob in his, in his groin area, in, in the recess of his thigh, uh, of his hip. And uh, Jacob limped for the rest of his life. But even though his hip was thrown out of joint, Jacob was given the victory. The Lord said to him, you have won the victory. Jacob won the victory. He wrestled with God all night. And God said, what's your name? He said, Jacob. He said, no, no longer will you be called Jacob. You'll be called Israel. And uh, God, um, God reminded Jacob of the covenant. Jacob's name would be Israel, the father of the great nation. And so uh, we don't have time for <clears throat> Genesis 33, 34, 35, 36, but Genesis 33 is Jacob and Esau are reconciled. I mean, they reconciled when they met, uh, even though Esau was coming after Jacob with 600 soldiers, and Jacob was afraid, and his servants were afraid that they'd have to fight a war. When Jacob saw Esau and Esau saw Jacob, they both ran to each other, hugged each other, kissed each other, and they were reconciled. And so Jacob uh, led his uh, army people to one area, and he settled in that region, and Esau went back to his area. Chapter 34 it's all about how the one daughter of Jacob, Dinah, was defiled uh, by a man. The man uh, 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 sexually abused her and, and, and raped her, actually. And then um, they arranged for the marriage. The two families made <clears throat> arranged for a marriage. But uh, later on, we find that Judah and another brother sought revenge. They did not release this family from the uh, rape of their sister and they slaughtered this whole family. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll see bitterness throughout the Bible. You'll see revenge. Uh, uh, see people carrying grudges. Chapter 35, we see the death of Rachel and the death of Isaac. And then chapter 36, we see Esau's descendants. Esau. So we get a whole genealogy in uh, chapter 36 about what happened to Esau and his his followers and it sets us all up to recognize that Esau was the father of the Edomites <clears throat> and the Edomites were bitter enemies of Israel throughout Old Testament history. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground uh, to, tonight and I um, want you to read these chapters <clears throat> Then next week's assignment, Genesis chapter 37 through 50. We're going to look at 37 <clears throat> through 50. We're going to look at a very powerful man next week, Joseph. We're going to look at Genesis 37 through 50 as we set the stage, as we set the stage for Moses to come along the scene to deliver God's people out of Egypt. 
This Bible is so exciting. Read it. Study it. Uh, ask God to give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And um, not only study, but teach your family the Word of God. Teach your family how to stand on the Word of God. Many books have been written, but no book is like this book, the Bible. It's the truth. The Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Okay, before we go into a time of Q&A, question and answer, let's pray. Father, we worship you. Uh, lift up my hands to you and ask that those uh, online with us lift up their hands unto you. And those listening to the recording, lift up our holy hands unto you. We worship you and thank you and bless you. Thank you for the opportunity to study your word. Your word is truth. God, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Let your word be a light and a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you for this class. Thank you that you have many who desire to go through the Bible. Thank you for uh, students in this school. Thank you for giving us an anointing and for guided instruction. We praise you for who you are. Thank you for your mighty works. Thank you for the things you have done. Thank you for the things you're doing and the things you will do. And we commit every situation, everything unto you, every challenge. We trust you, Lord God. Thank you for your word, Lord God. Continue to bless each and every one and guide us, Lord. And the Lord continue working miracles and sending signs and wonders in our lives. And we worship you. We thank you for your love for us, your love for Israel, your love for all mankind. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sister Jackie Carter, how are you doing? I'm good. Praise God. Are there any things that we need to attend to? Um, no. Jean has some interesting comments. Um, and I like the book, The Whales and the Women, uh, as a possible title. That, Say that um, again. You like what? Uh, Jean says there's power and blessings in your time, but then she says, let's write a book, The Whales and the Women. The Whales and the Women. Hey, that's what, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? You can instruct men where to find a godly wife. You know what I mean? Uh, it ain't in the nightclub. It ain't in the bar. It ain't in the flu, flu, floozy house, the flop house. Okay? Y'all will work with that. Continue. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I don't see anything else. Okay. Let's let's flip it over to Dr. Jean Bratton. See if she has anything that needs our attention. And then we ask we open up uh, the floor to our audience. Dr. Bratton? Okay. Uh, Jean's still probably having trouble Hello? with the microphone. Hello, Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We hear you. You can hear me? I can hear you now, Jean. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I think this was awesome. Of course, I monopolized the chat window, but a lot was going through my head as you were teaching. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I know I have two powerful warriors in the chat window, and you all are just anointed and blessed and so precious. Uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jean Bratton uh, is the uh, dean of our Back to Basic school uh, here in, uh, actually assistant dean. I'm, I'm operating as dean right now, but Jean uh, has all of America, North America. And then um, we started this school years ago. I think it was 20, <clears throat> 20, 2010 we started this, this school of ministry. And this is our third journey, Jean, through the Bible. Yes. With, with a, yes. 
uh, group of uh, people, and many are going through again with us, and it's such a wonderful journey. Dr. Jean is the pastor of the um, Living Water yes, Ministries, 5 Pennsylvania Avenue in Wilmington, Delaware. So if you're in that area, please make sure you visit her, become a part of that great church. Anything else, Dr. Jean? No, sir. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's ask uh, 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 Jackie Fisher any questions. Hi, Dr. Carter. Hi. No, I, don't, I don't have any questions right now. Okay, so okay. We've touched on a lot of <clears throat> different subjects through those chapters. That's a lot of information. Wasn't that a lot of information, Jackie? Yes. Okay. I hope it wasn't overwhelming, but you you all read it and go over it again and cover. By the way, Jackie, your email address. Let's let's flip over to your other email address because I sent you two emails today and they bounced back. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what is happening, so I I've, I've tried many times, but I think finally I got my homework to you. Yes, your homework, you sent your homework to me, but uh, I tried to send you a response to the homework and um, did not go through. So okay. send me your alt alternate email address later on, okay? okay. I will All right, thank you. And I okay. appreciate you. Give my blessing to Brother Russell. Okay, I sure will. Okay. Brian Whitaker, were you blessed tonight? Yeah, amen, Pastor. Um I actually have a friend. A friend sat in uh, tonight with me, uh, Tyler, and uh, I, I guess he had a question for you. Hey, Tyler, how you doing, man? Pretty good. All right. Um, it's funny that uh, Esau gave his birthright for a bowl of <laughs> bowl of soup. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I was just wondering why exactly did he do that? Uh, basically, the Bible says, Tyler, he was hungry. He was famished. He'd been out hunting all day. He came back. He, he thought he was, he was exhausted. He was exhausted. You ever been so hungry? You said, you said I'll give anything for a sandwich. Well, he was hungry. <laughs> he was exhausted, Tyler. That's why he did that. But he did something dumb. He did it dumb. <laughs> Pretty dumb. And I can I can look back over my life, Tyler. I've done a lot of dumb things, you know. Uh, me too. And and have given up a lot of stuff because of dumb decisions. Hey, Tyler. Hope you join us again, man. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thanks Dr. for coming Dr. on. Dr. Carter. Uh, but Tyler Tyler's kind of like the person I'm mentoring. Good, good. Well, Tyler, you have a great mentor, and uh, whatever we can do to help you as you mentor Brian, let us know, okay? Oh. All right, I will. Good, Thanks, good. Dr. Tyler. Okay, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Okay. Um, Ryan, you still rolling? Yeah, I'm still uh, heading down the highway. Still trucking down the highway. Okay, you drive carefully. I hope this lesson was a blessing. By the way, I will send out the recording to you all later on tonight, and it will be all also on my website. Brian, as you mentor Tyler, uh, all of these lessons are on the will be on the website. Each week I'll put the lesson up on the website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. Okay, so you can take your time and go through each lesson. Andrew Hawkins. Andrew. Hey, Dr. Carter. How's it going? Hey, man. Fine. How are you doing? Good, good. I kind of had some issues with my Internet for a second. I thought I was going to have to get off here early, but I'm getting it working now, so thank God. <laughs> good, good. I, God. I, I actually did have a question for you. Um, when uh, Rebecca and met Isaac... And she ended up uh, putting a veil over herself. Is that where we get today the tradition of a woman putting a veil on her when we get married? Well, it, in that in that custom in that custom that custom was that uh, uh, in in the East, 
a woman would veil herself, an unmarried woman would veil herself, okay? Uh, the young men were not to look in her face, okay? Okay, until uh, after they were married. So perhaps we can we, we have to do a little bit of research on that. <laughs> that goes all the way back to that biblical tra biblical tradition, which was an Eastern uh, uh, Eastern tradition, not only with Israel but in the surrounding nations. Okay, and mm -hmm. so and so I guess we've kind of capitalized that on that. And and, and uh, it's, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny that a woman, when she gets married, she's got to put a veil on. She spends all this money on this nice uh, wedding dress and a veil also. And then uh, and and the man lifts up the veil to give her a kiss upon the wedding, the, the uh, completion of the wedding ceremony. Kind of kind of kind of weird too because I mean uh, we've kind of. I uh, looked at her a little bit before we got we got married. Uh, I'm quite sure. Hey, is Cheryl on there on board right now? Yeah, she's on here. Cheryl, hey Cheryl, what do you think about that? Um, are you there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hi. Sorry, Cheryl, it's echoing you, really you, bad. <laughs> you, you heard your husband's question, right, about the veil? I I did. Uh huh. Okay. Where do you think that where do you think that uh, custom originated? Um, I think it could originated from that. Yes, yes. But yes. like you said, they the man sees our face before um, we even do get married, and we have the veil over our face, so it's kind of silly now. But before then, maybe I don't know. Hey Cheryl, a lot of ladies would save a whole lot of money if they just eliminate the veil from the wedding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Carter. Okay. Dr. Carter. <laughs> okay. So hey, Dr. we're praying Carter. much for you. We're praying much for you. Yes, Dr. Bratton. Um, we got it a little mixed up here in Western civilization. The okay, reason before why you, before you go there, before you go there, Jean. Hey Cheryl, we're praying much for you. We know the babies do any day now, so we're what? praying much for you guys, okay? Thank you. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Praise God. Dr. Bratton? We have a little mixed up in the United States. In, um, in, in those countries, Israel and the rest of the countries, the women cover their face because only their husband is supposed to see their beauty. Mm -hmm. um, the veil over the bride's face in the United States um, is just, um, I should say, a spinoff of that tradition, though we do it wrong because we do show our face mm -hmm. long before we get married. But there, women cover their faces until they're married, because only a husband is supposed to behold their beauty. Okay, okay. So on the, in, in many countries, on the day of the wedding is, what you see is what you get. Huh? Is what you get. <laughs> what I mean, you see I mean, is what you get. What you see is what you get. I mean, Isaac, that brother was in faith, wasn't he? <laughs> I mean, can 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 you imagine if if the servant had brought him somebody back? I mean, who was not pleasant to the eyes, and he and and he would have to be like like well, like his son Jacob would have to be. Jacob would have to be faithful to Leah for all of Leah's life, because in those days they honored marriage, didn't they, Doctor Jean? That's right. They honored marriage and they honored those vows. Okay, we kind of got things kind of twisted up these days. Um, anybody else have any questions? Anyone? Any comments? Any anything else come up, Jackie? That we need to attend to? Well, let me just share this. I once married a couple, and um, they came back from their honeymoon. 
I saw I saw the the man a week later when they came back from the honeymoon. He looked so despondent, so dejected. He's in Chester, Pennsylvania. I said, "Hey, man, why are you looking down? I mean, you just got married." Yeah, man, I'm just getting divorced too, man. I'm getting a divorce. He said, "Man, she left me the night of the wedding." I said, "What?" Yeah, man, she left me the night of the wedding. And so I said, well, "Why?" And he told me why, and I'm not I'm not at liberty to. Uh, share why but that was very sad they did not stay married 24 hours not even 24 hours well it goes that way sometimes but what you see is what you get everybody have a great night praise god anyone else have any comments any closing comments jackie anything else that we, we need to close out on I don't see anything except Karen made a statement that if a woman was spoken for in ancient Israel, they had to cover prior to the wedding. And I guess it's kind of like we do now, even though you see the bride, you know her, but you're not supposed to see her in her wedding dress. You're not supposed to see her the day of the wedding until then. So I guess when you do see your bride, you are seeing her. Uh, in a different light, I guess. So. Okay, so like today is supposed to be like 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 Isaac. He's meditating in the field. He's out there praying in the field, and he sees the camel coming, and he forgets about the prayer, and he says, "Oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you," and he starts running to the camel, right? And that's the way it's supposed to be when when the bride comes down the aisle. It's like you've seen it before, but. But now, I mean, it, it, it's almost that time. You know what I mean? And so, so uh, uh, I guess it's, we're supposed to stop what we're doing, but still stand there with some dignity. We've got to, a man has to stand there with the best man and the ushers with some dignity while the bride comes down. Down, uh, she's gonna sashay down the aisle, and uh, some of those brides want to run down that aisle, don't they? <laughs> How was it when you came down the aisle, Jackie? I stopped. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Jackie is in. For, she's in deep do. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I did, and I get teased because I stopped, but I stopped so that I could sing to my husband on the way down the aisle. She sang all the way down, ladies and gentlemen. She sang. Yes, and it was so beautiful. And thank you. I still love you, baby. I still love you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Karen, thanks for coming on, everybody. CK, we haven't heard from you. We heard from you earlier. CK, uh, wind us up, would you please? Well, I think we need to uh, focus on whatever God's will is. That's what will be done. Because when the babies, the twins were in the womb, they were fighting. And God told the mother what exactly was going to happen, that mm -hmm. the younger would be, uh, but the, the whole story of how it happened um, wasn't displayed, but as you can see how it happened, I think it's real interesting how in the beginning, and then if you listen to the story, you get a little upset with Jacob and his mother and all of that, but it seems like that's all, that was all in God's plan. So sometimes when things in our lives don't, don't look like what we want, we just need to pray to God because he has a plan. And in the end, it will be God's will will be done. Praise God. Thank you, CK. Thank you for those words of wisdom. That was really wonderful. Praise God. And, and ladies and gentlemen, Trust the Lord, no matter what's going on in your life. Trust God. Uh, Romans 8.28 says, For we know that all things work together uh, for good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. C.K., can you close us out with prayer, please? Dear Lord, thank you so much for blessing us this evening, for opening our eyes to all of this magnificence that we see in the Bible. And I know in these times, our eyes are opened more widely than they were before. And we praise you and you, we thank you in God's name. Thank you for all of those who are able to attend and that will be listening later. And be with everyone this week. And may all have a blessed week.
In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Have a wonderful, blessed week. Lord be with you. Sir, so everybody. Love you guys. Cheers. God bless. God bless. Good, Good night. Good night, Dr. Carter. Good night, Jackie. Good, Good night, night, everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.